Good morning, eighth grade. It is Monday, April 26th. Um, we are going to pray um, St. Catherine of Siena's prayer this week. So let's begin in prayer. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Holy Spirit, come into my heart, draw it to thee by thy power, O my God, and grant me charity with filial fear. Preserve me, O beautiful love, from every evil thought. Warm me, inflame me with thy dear love, and every pain will seem light to me. My Father, my sweet Lord, help me in all my actions. Jesus love, Jesus love, amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. All right. Oh, this picture here. So Presley sent me pictures of her pets. She has two dogs and we get to see um, Josie. This is Josie today. And then um, her other dog I've got later in the week. So, um, but this is really, I thought a really cute picture, that poor dog. I don't know what you were doing, Presley. Okay. Um, so for this warm up problem, use a discriminant to identify the nature and number of solutions to the following quadratic equation. So pause the video and solve that and then come on back. Okay, so um, if we remember from last week, the discriminant is the part of the quadratic formula that's under the radical. Um, and what we get for, an, for that part of the equation helps us to identify a little bit more about the solution. It doesn't give us the solution to a quadratic, but it tells us about the solution. And so we're going to plug in um, to the discriminant and see what we get. Now in this equation, a, a is the 2, B is 5, and C is negative 3. So I'm going to plug in here and say B squared, which is 25, minus 4 times A, which is 2, times C, which is a negative 3. And so this is the square root of 25. Um, and now it's going to be plus 8 times 3 is 24, which is the square root of, oops, not 20 the square root of 49, which is seven. Okay, so we got seven as an answer there. We had, there was a perfect, um, the square root of 49 is seven or, so really it's this part here, this is a perfect square. And when we, um, when we take the square root of a perfect square, we get a rational number, right? And so when we plug into the quadratic formula, when we actually go to solve problems, we're going to end up with rational, num uh, rational numbers in this particular problem because this number under the radical was a perfect square. So what that tells us is that our solutions, our two solutions, we are going to have two solutions because remember, there's a plus or minus out in front, okay? So we're going to have two solutions and their nature is that they will be rational and they are going to be rational, okay? And the reason they are rational is because the part under the square root was a perfect square. Had the, had the number under that square root been a non-perfect square, then we end up with an irrational number. Because remember, non-perfect squares, something like the square root of 5 or the square root of 2, those are irrational numbers. And if that's irrational, then we say the whole answer is irrational. Okay? All right, so that's our warm-up. Um, today, actually, let's just get back to our slides. So today is actually the last lesson in this unit on solving quadratic equations. Um, we are today we're going to continue to ask those um, essential questions. How do we find the solution to a quadratic equation algebraically and specifically when we can't factor? That's what we're doing today. And then the question is, what's, what does it mean when the solutions are not rational? Hopefully you're starting to form some answers to the, those questions in your own head that you're starting to figure that out. Well, if solutions are not rational, it just means that they have a square root in them, right? They still, it still means that the quadratic function has a solution. Um, if you were to graph it, it's going to cross the x-axis, but it's not going to cross at a fraction or a decimal or a whole number, right? It's going to cross in some irrational part point, okay? So today um, we're going to solve quadratic equations using the quadratic formula. We're just going to actually use that same formula um, that we talked about last Thursday, but we're just looking at the discriminant part. All right, so we are going to actually start with that same problem that we had in the warm up. 
Now remember when we did the warm up and we found the discriminant, we said that we were going to have two rational solutions. That's what the discriminant told us. If we're going to have rational solutions, that means we can actually factor the quadratic, okay? We're gonna go ahead and do that. I'm gonna factor this one. Um, we're gonna solve it that way. And then we're gonna solve it using the quadratic formula because I wanna show you that you get the same answer either way, okay? So let's factor this one. Now, I am going to factor um, using trial and error. If you want to factor using the Xbox method, absolutely go ahead and do that. Um, but like I had mentioned in the, in the past, the more comfortable you get with these, it becomes easier to, to um, see the solutions and, and see those um, combinations of factors without having to do the Xbox method. If you're not there yet, that's okay. You can still use Xbox. All right. So I need to look at the first term and I've got 2x squared, which means my only options are 2x and x. And then I look at the last term and my only options there are three and one. And so now I need to figure out where I'm going to put the three and the one so that I can get a positive five in the middle. If I put three here, I'm going to get um, three times two, which is six. And if I put one here, then I'll get one. And I can combine six and one to get five. If I make this a positive three, I get a positive six X. And if I make this a negative one, I'll get a negative one X. Well, six X minus one X gives me five X. And so it works. So I factored it that way. Now let's solve it. So two X minus one equals zero or x plus 3 equals 0. Well, this one's easy. easy. It's um, x equals negative 3. And on this one, I get 2x equals 1, or x equals 1 half. So these are the solutions to that quadratic. And I did that by factoring. Now, the cool thing about the quadratic formula is that it works for every quadratic function. It works for quadratic functions that factor, and it works for quadratic functions that don't factor. So let's go ahead and plug into the quadratic formula and see we should get the same answers. We should get x equals 1 half and x equals negative 3. So the quadratic formula is x equals the opposite of b plus or minus the square root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. You do not have to memorize this formula right now. The more you use it, you'll, you will eventually probably memorize it. But if you want to just keep it handy when you're working on homework, when you're taking the test um, on Wednesday, that's fine. You can use, you can have that formula in front of you. I don't expect you to memorize it. Or I don't require you to memorize it. Okay, so a is 2, b is 5, c is negative 3. So let's plug in. Um, x equals negative 5 plus or minus the square root of 25 minus 4 times 2 times a negative 3 all over 2a, which is 2 times 2 or 4. x equals negative 5 plus or minus the square root. This is 25 plus 24 or 49. Okay, so we did that in the warm up. All over 4 x equals negative 5 plus or minus 7 over 4. All right. Now, remember that plus or minus means there's two solutions. So one of my solutions is negative 5 plus 7 over 4. And my other solution is negative 5 minus 7 over 4. And then I simplify both of those. So negative 5 plus 7 is 2, 2 over 4 is 1 half. Negative 5 minus 7 is a negative 12 over 4, which is negative 3. And look at that, same answers as I got when I factored. So if you can factor a quadratic, um, your answers are going to be rational, OK? If you can't factor the quadratic, your answers are going to be irrational. And we're going to solve a couple of those right now. The thing I also want to point out here is that when you look at the solution when I factored it versus when I didn't factor it, when I used the quadratic formula, I think, and I, I'm hoping that a lot of you will agree with me on this, there are a lot more opportunities for error 
when you're doing the quadratic formula because you've got a lot of calculations that you're doing, a lot of signs that you're worried about. So if you can factor, you should factor. Use the quadratic formula when you can't factor, okay? Um, it's because it, it, there's, it's easier to make errors, okay, when you're working with that many different numbers. And I wouldn't be surprised if I make an error at some point in this video, okay? So you have to really pay attention to the details, especially when you're using the quadratic formula. Okay, let's, um, let's solve a couple more. Let's do, oh, where did I put my, the problems I was gonna solve? Oh, here we go. Okay, let's do this one. Let's do 2x squared plus 5x, no, not 5x, plus 8x equals 5. Okay, now in order to use the quadratic formula, I have to get this equation in standard form. So I need to get everything on one side of the equation and get zero on the other side of the equation. So I'm going to subtract five on both sides so that this is 2x squared plus 8x minus five equals zero. Now I can try and factor it if I want, um, and you should. For the purpose of this lesson, I'm not going to, because, and the, for the purpose of your homework, I don't want you to, because I actually want you to practice using the quadratic formula. Okay, I'm not sure if this one's going to, if this one would factor or not. So we're going to go ahead and use the quadratic formula. A is equal to two, B is equal to eight, and C is equal to a negative five. And now we plug into the formula. And I will a lot of times go ahead and write out the formula each time just so that I don't miss something. So x equals opposite of b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So opposite of b, negative 8 plus or minus the square root of b squared is 64 minus 4 times 2 times negative 5 all over 2a, which is 4. Negative 8 plus or minus the square root of 64, uh, this is going to be plus 40, right? So 4 times 2 is 8 times 5 is 40, all over 4. So x equals negative 8 plus or minus the square root of 104, all over 4. Okay, 104 is not a perfect square. So the good news is that I wouldn't have been able to factor this anyway. But now we need to simplify this. So we need to simplify this, this um, irrational square root. The square root of 104, well, I could say that is 4 times 26, right? I'm pretty sure that's right. 26 times 4 yep, is 104. And so I can simplify this. This is like saying the square root of 4 times the square root of 26 or 2 times the square root of 26. Okay, so I've simplified the square root of 104 to be that. So my answer now reads negative 8 plus or minus 2 square root of 26 over 4. But I'm not quite done yet because notice that I each of these terms, and I have three terms in this expression. I have this term here, I have this term here, and I have this term here. They all have a two in common. So I can divide every term by two. Basically, I'm factoring out um, a two on the top and then canceling it with two from the four on the bottom. And so this becomes um, 8 divided by 2 is 4, so negative 4 plus or minus the square root of 26 all over 2. That's my answer. In the previous problem that we did where we had a rational answer, we simplified it further. You can leave your answers, if they are irrational, you can leave them like this. The two answers technically will be negative 4 plus the square root of 26 over 4 or, or over 2 and negative 4 minus the square root of 26 over 2. Okay, these are technically your two answers to the problem. Those are the two solutions. And if you were to plug those numbers into a calculator and get an approximation, because remember, you're not going to get an exact number. You're going to get um, a decimal that goes on and on and on forever. And then if you were to graph 
the quadratic, you would notice that these two points are where that graph is going to cross the x-axis, okay? So again, these solutions represent where the graph would cross the x-axis, all right? And it just so happens in this problem, those solutions are irrational. Okay, let's do another one. Let's do this one. 20 is equal to 16x squared. Okay, this one looks kind of funny, right? But let's go ahead and get it into standard form. I'm going to subtract 20 on both sides. 0 equals 16x squared minus 20. So what's a, b, and c? Well, a is 16. There is no b. There's no x term, right? So b is 0 because 0 times x would be 0. And then c is a negative 20. Okay, let's go ahead and solve it. So let's do um, opposite of b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So b is 0, so I have 0 plus or minus the square root of 0 minus 4 times 16 times 20 all over 2a, which is um, 32, 2 times 16, okay? Make sure I did that right. Opposite of b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4a. Oh, that's a negative 20. I need to remember that, okay? And then now let's simplify it. So the 0 just goes away, and I have the square root of 4 times 20 times 16. Now, with these bigger numbers, absolutely use your calculator. You do not have to do all this by hand. Um, I'm going to go ahead and plug those in and say, okay, 4 times 16 times 20 is 1,280 all over 32. And it's positive because it was minus 4 times a, a positive 16 times a negative 20. So it becomes positive, which is good because if this number under the radical had been negative, we would stop right there and say there are no solutions. Okay. Now, 1,280, I don't know if that's a perfect square or not. So you know what, I'm gonna try it. I'm gonna check it on my calculator and just take the square root. When I do that on my calculator, I get 35.777087 blah, blah, blah on forever. Okay, I know right now it's not a perfect square. I'm just gonna have to simplify it, okay? So what are some perfect squares that are, I'm gonna have to factor it. So 1,280, I know, um, I'm, I'm pretty sure I can divide by, can I divide by 4? Yes. So 1280 divided by 4 is 320. And 320, I think, is divisible by 16. Oops. And so again, I just have to go through this trial and error to find those perfect squares. It is. So I've got 16 and 20 and 20 goes to 4 and 5. Okay, so perfect squares that I've got in here. I've actually got 16 times 16. So I can say that 1280, what is 16 times 16? Is equal to 256 times 5. Yep, all right. So I figured out the perfect squares. So or the, what perfect squares are in there. So the square root of 1280 is the square root of 256 times 5. The square root of 256 is 16. So this is 16 square root of 5. OK. This is probably going to be the hardest part of these problems, is simplifying those square roots, those irrational square roots. OK. The more you do them, the more practice you do, the easier they get. The key to these is to factor. First of all, check and see if it's a perfect square. And if it's not, start factoring out perfect squares until you figure out what is the biggest perfect square in there, OK? All right, so now back to our problem. So this is now plus or minus 16 square root of 5 over 32. Can I simplify it any further? Yeah, because 16 goes into 32. So this is plus or minus the square root of 5 over 2. That's my answer. OK, my two solutions, if I wanted to write them out separately, are square root of 5 over 2 and negative square root of 5 over 2. OK, but you can leave it this way if you would like. All right. 
Okay, one more problem. This one's a word problem. A child drops a stick from a bridge that is 30 feet above a stream. Okay, how long will it take the stick to reach the water? And we remember the formula is um, distance is equal to 16 t squared. So how long, so the question is how long to reach the water? If I drop a stick from 30 feet above, well, let's plug into the formula. Distance is 30 feet. So 30 equals 16 t squared. 0 equals 16 t squared minus 30. OK. All right, let's plug into the quadratic formula. It's not a difference of squares, so I might as well do that. So let's say um, a is 16, b is 0, and c is a negative 30. Opposite of b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. So 0 plus or minus the square root of 0 minus 4 times 16 times a negative 30 all over 32. Okay, so 4 times 16 times 30, if I multiply that all together, I get 1920. So this is the square root of 1920 over 32. Okay, so we're solving a word problem. When we have a word problem, and if we were talking about this problem, I would not say, well, you know, it takes the square root of 1920 over 32 seconds to hit the water, right? If I said that to you, you would think I was crazy. You'd probably think I was crazy just for wanting to solve this problem, but we did solve the problem. The thing is, when you're solving a word problem and solving for something like time, okay, we're gonna approximate it. So what I want you to do at this point is to say, okay, well, what is the square root of 1920 over 32? We're just gonna plug it in our calculator. I'm gonna say, Let's see, 1,920, and I'm going to take the square root of it. And I got 43.8178, blah, 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 forever, OK? And then I take that number and divide it by 32, and I got 1 point, um, we'll say 1.3. I had 1.36, but I'm going to say 1.4 seconds, about, OK? And so we have to use the approximate. OK, so when you're solving a word problem that involves distance and time and you end up with non-perfect square roots um, when you're using the quadratic formula, approximate it on your calculator. OK, now when you're solving geometry problems, you should leave them as, um, well, no, you shouldn't. You, you have to wait and see what's asked for in the question. Sometimes you're asked in geometry questions to leave it as a radical, um, but sometimes they want the approximation. OK, in which case you would do the same thing. So on your word problems, keep that in mind. OK. All right. OK, so your assignment is worksheet 10-7, 2 through 14 even. Um, one other thing I want to point out, I did not solve an example problem where you ended up with a negative number under the radical. If you end up with a negative number under the radical, you stop right there and you say there are no real solutions, okay? Um, I think you have, I think you have one like that. Um, yes, you have one like that on your assignment. You have a couple of problems that end up being rational, that end up with, um, that you could have factored them. But I don't want you factoring. I want you using the quadratic formula on all of the problems on your homework assignment. Your last problem, number 14, is a problem just like that last word problem that we did. You need to approximate it. You need to um, figure out the time um, and approximate it, OK? So you don't need to, I don't want you leaving it in simplest radical form. I want you to actually calculate the answer, the approximate answer on that one, OK? All right, well, that is it. Um, I will see you back here tomorrow. We will review and get ready for your test. So we'll review tomorrow. We'll review on Wednesday. You take your test on Wednesday. And then we start new stuff on Thursday, all right? Have a great afternoon. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.